Hey everyone. As we take a trip down memory lane to end the year, March 23rd is a day that will always stick out for me because that was the first day I dropped an episode of CityCast Houston as its new host. It also happens to be one of my favorite episodes because lead producer Dina Kespa, producer Carleon Jones, and Hey Houston newsletter editor Brooke Lewis joined me to lay out the 16 essential rules to survive this crazy city we call home. It's Thursday, December 28th, 2023. I'm Rahil Ramzanali, and here's what Houston's talking about. Hi, new team. Hey. What's happening? It is our first team chat. I've got Carly on Jones, Brooke Lewis, and lead producer Dina Kespo with me. How are y'all? Hey, Rahil. Welcome. Feeling good. Excited to be here and have you here. Yes. yes so excited. I know. It's been so much fun. So much <laughs> fun so far. Um, so let me introduce everyone. As I mentioned, we have Dina, lead producer, Brooke Lewis, who writes our awesome newsletter, Hey Houston, which you need to subscribe to right now. Okay. Subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe to the newsletter. She keeps you up to date on everything that's happening in Houston. And then we also have producer Carly on Jones. All right. So before we start, we're gonna do our uh, we're gonna do our essential rules for Houston to survive this crazy city that we love. But before we do that, I want to go around and get everyone's background. All right, the listeners need to know why do you love Houston, Dina, and how long have you lived here? Born and raised. <laughs> I only escaped. I, I know I say escaped, but I only left <laughs> Houston <laughs> for maybe like three and a half years uh, when I left to go and actually get into audio because I was working at the Chronicle and transitioned into audio and DC was my nice. place. Love it. Brooke, how about you? So I'm also born and raised, love Houston. And then I did, I wouldn't even say, I think I wanted to escape too, uh, <laughs> briefly for college and grad school. But then I came back in 2016 and I haven't left. Yeah, that, that that's a common theme. We all try to escape and some of us did. Mm -hmm. um, and then some of us didn't. But Carly on, you escaped. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I escaped <laughs> for a little bit. So I was born here and partially raised here. So um, I stayed here until I was about like eight years old. Then we moved about an hour away to the country. I was gone for college and all my high school years. And then I came back about a year and a half ago now. Okay, perfect. Love it. So uh, four people on th this chat and me, uh, you heard in the intro, I, I grew up here. So we know the city, all right? Mm -hmm. And we know what it takes to survive this crazy city. And we're going to give you some rules. And you, you don't have to follow these rules, but these are just rules that we've noticed that if you follow them, the experience in Houston is going to be much better. And by the way, if you have rules that you want to share with us, then please uh, mention it to us on our social media accounts. And you can also email us. We've got all that information in the show description. So let's get started. Dina, you go first. What's your first rule to survive Houston? Y'all have to have a functioning, keyword, functioning umbrella. Okay. <laughs> And I say this okay. from experience because I've had an umbrella in the past in my car, but then it's one of those really like flimsy ones where the second you step out and it's windy, it flips outwards. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. And Houston ain't the city to get caught without an umbrella. No, especially during the months of January to December. Exactly. Literally every month. You just <laughs> never, like, there's always rain somehow, some way. It's so crazy. I know. Oh, that is such a good one, Dina. I love it. Because I, I put money into a good umbrella and it changes everything. Yeah, exactly. It's worth it. Pay 35 bucks if you have to, 50 even, you know, upwards of 50. If it's like that really sturdy one, it's worth the money. Trust me. Absolutely. And it's going to last forever. Exactly. All right. If it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Brooke, what is your essential rule to survive Houston? Mine is you will never be able to try all the restaurants here, but you can try because as I've grown up here, born and raised, as I said, and it is impossible to try all the restaurants. You're going to want to when you move here because you're just going to hear about mm -hmm. all the amazing food, but just pace yourself because there's going to be a new restaurant open probably by the time you're like, I tried this one. So my advice is to pace yourself, wear stretchy pants, you're on a food <laughs> journey and just pace yourself because you will not be able to try all the restaurants. 
Okay, good pacing and stretchy pants. I wasn't expecting stretchy pants to be number two for us, <laughs> but here we are, and I'm happy that stretchy pants are acceptable when you're trying to tackle the Houston food scene. Uh, Carl Leon, how about you? Okay, so mine is like a survival kit. You always have to have an extra pair of clothes, a water bottle, and a little snack in your car. Now, my Ooh. mom has been telling me this since I was a kid, and I used to not listen, and now I see why she tells me <laughs> to do this. Because traffic is so bad that, let's say you're trying to go to a friend's house to an event or something like that, you're going to be late if you don't have an extra pair of clothes in the car already just prepared, or you're going to be like hungry and starving, thirsty, just in traffic. If you don't have like something small, like a Rice Krispie, some water, it's important. I'm telling you, it's really important. Okay. Can I build on <laughs> I like that, that, Carly? Because like, like uh -huh. okay. yeah. <clears throat> so especially the snack and the, like the, the clothes, mm -hmm. I, I would say definitely pack like sneakers and socks because I've had so many moments where I'd pack the wrong shoes and my feet mm -hmm. would be soaked from the rain oh and I'd be gosh, wishing yeah. I had like socks and sneakers in my trunk and then a trench coat because our weather is so like up and down. I've had days where I'd be like so cold and I'd forget to pack a trench coat because like I left the house and it was hot and humid. And mm -hmm. I was like, damn, I'd have to like stop by Walmart or Target and pick up something to keep myself warm with. And then the water thing in the summer, I would say, especially the snacks, I've made the mistake where I'd leave snacks in the car and they would like either melt <laughs> or the mm. water would be like scorching, boiling hot. <laughs> <laughs> No, I definitely made that mistake so many times. And I would just like adding on to Carly, eat like eat ahead of schedule, because even <laughs> mm -hmm. if you think you're not that hungry, by the time you make it to your destination, you're going to be hungry. So whether you're going to like a birthday party, whether you're going to a dinner, eat the snack because you're going to be glad that you did. So you don't show up hangry because that's definitely <laughs> happened to me. Facts. I like that. So <laughs> essential rule number three is your traffic survival kit mm -hmm. and I'm going to tack one more thing onto this one. Always add 15 minutes to your drive, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. and, and don't use traffic as an excuse mm -hmm. in the city of Houston because expect it. So just always have that 15 minutes tacked onto your essential kit, all right? Mm -hmm. So this is like a little combo for everyone. But I'm going to give you my first one. My first official one, please don't cut in the merge lane. <laughs> and specifically on 59 by the 527 spur, 59 and I-45, oh. <laughs> literally any any freeway merger, please do not cut, okay? Because nothing gets us more irritated in the city than people cutting to the front of the line. Like, I understand a mid-cut, okay? If you're back there about, you know, look, I, I get it. You want to cut a little bit? That's fine. But don't be the person that slows down the entire <laughs> flow of traffic because you're trying to cut especially on that spur by downtown. Oh, that, please don't do That's it. That's a real survival. Can I just say, say Brooke, go ahead. Because I was, oh, was going to go ahead. I feel like we're all very passionate about traffic. <laughs> yeah, I was so there's probably a lot that's about to be said. Go. But I just gonna, I'm just going to say, if you're going to cut, don't make eye contact. Just own it. <laughs> just do it. Just, okay. just go for it. Because like people, I feel like people on Houston traffic, like I, I just don't want to even make eye contact if I'm doing something that I know I shouldn't be doing <laughs> mm -hmm. because I'm scared to look at what the other person is doing because they will make eye contact back so just yes. don't look oh, at true. them just go right ahead do the cut make the mistake and just keep it moving because... okay but do you wave do you give them a so, like a you gotta wave. wave i used i used to do the wave but i feel like the wave has died you guys like it doesn't <laughs> happen anymore because i wave at people and they look at me like i'm crazy because i just don't think it happens my parents were the ones that waved my whole life like growing up they would always <laughs> wave whenever they cut in front of people but it doesn't happen anymore so i've just stopped waving i just don't make eye contact i just cut in front of people and i keep it moving <laughs> Dang. Carly, you wanted to jump in on this, right? What's up? Yeah, I was going to say that that's a true survival kit because people get mad. They're ready to fight for real. So if you don't want to fight on the freeway, <laughs> do not cut people off. Leave it alone. <laughs> See, I go, like, here's my thing. If you're going to do it, um, that's fine. Like, that, that's fine. But me as the driver, you're cutting off. I feel like insurance companies should give you one grace hit per year. And what I mean by that is, like, I will be really aggressive if you're cutting me, because I usually don't cut unless it's like I make a mistake or something. Mm -hmm. But I usually go to the back of the line. I follow the rules. But if you're trying to edge in, I will keep creeping up. Dang. And like, I okay. will play that game of chicken. 
So if you hit me or I hit you, I should get one grace hit. <laughs> like, I'm not talking about a hard hit. I'm not talking about hurting people. I'm just talking about a little side swipe, right? Like, I will play the game of chicken all the way up until you either stop or I let you in. You want it like so, a go-kart bump, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, I'm going to put little bumpers on my car. Okay. <laughs> Can I just say, okay. I've, I've done it. Yeah. I've done it. I've cut. But listen, listen, listen. And we all have. like I, it was mostly unintentional because it's like, oh, I'm like, oh, crap. Like the GPS tells me I'm supposed to go this way and I couldn't mm-hmm. read it properly because you're driving and you can't pay attention. And people get really angry and they're like, they're they're the heels on the road where they're inching, playing chicken. Like they're not letting you in. And I'm like doing the wave, trying to be like, please let me in. I'm sorry. Like trying to tell them my life story in the car on the highway. <laughs> No. Just to get you some can, sympathy. Gina, you can save that for the car behind me, okay? Because yeah. <laughs> I've been waiting for 25 minutes to get to downtown and you are not going to cut me. You can try that on Fair. the, on the uh, Corolla behind me. Damn. <laughs> That's why people are so patient because they've been waiting for like hours True. to get yes. to the True. exit. And so if you're the one cutting, they're just like, it's, it's not going to end well. Fair. No. Side note. Side note. So I... I take pictures of parents who cut in the drop-off line at school. Oh, my so, God. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I think it is the most insulting thing somebody can do is cut in the drop-off line at school. True. Like, we have parents, like, we we get backed up for half a mile, right? There's you know, a lot of kids trying to get to school, and some parents will literally cut you when you're about, like, the fifth car turning in. Ooh. And I think that's the most disrespectful thing ever because you think your time is more valuable than anybody else in that line. And I take pictures and I, I'd i be lying if I said I haven't posted it to a Facebook page. <laughs> <Dang. Okay. laughs> I, am, I am the Batman of traffic. Okay? Oh, I make sure that we, oh. we abide by the rules and justice is served in shameful comments on Facebook. Oh, <laughs> my God. Yeah, yeah. My God. Right. We're changing lives one car picture at a time, ladies. Dang. I feel like you just okay. need to stay Tangent. on the feeder hill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you do not need to much. touch traffic for real. <laughs> but I'm a really kind person, honestly. You've probably noticed that CityCast ads don't sound like other podcast ads. And that's because we're not just reciting national ad scripts. We're using our own words to talk about local businesses that we know and care about. Our ads are frequently passionate and they're always heartfelt. CityCast is doing things differently. And that's one reason we just won Ad Week's Podcast Innovator of the Year Award. This is personal for us. Our heart is in it. And when you place an ad with CityCast, our heart is in that as well. So if you're interested in getting your business or product in front of people who care about Houston as much as we do, consider placing an ad with CityCast, the podcast innovators of the year. And it's not just our city, by the way. CityCast has dedicated local teams in Boise, Chicago, Denver, DC, Madison, Philly, Pittsburgh, Portland, Salt Lake, Las Vegas, and soon Austin and Nashville. Place an ad today in the cities that matter to your company. Reach out by emailing us at ads at citycast.fm. That's ads at citycast.fm. Okay, Dina, your second essential rule. What do you got? You have to pack socks and a first aid kit. You will never understand the power of a first aid kit until you actually use it in a car. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about the yes. elaborate ones, the one that's got the band-aids, the gogs, not the little tiny puny ones that you get to travel with. I mean, that has saved my life so many times. Not that I'm out here like injuring myself and others around me, <laughs> but it's just like you never know when you need it. It's crazy. And I, I say every person, whether you're in Houston or you're out in the suburbs, you should definitely have a first aid kit in your trunk. I like that one. Brooke, what's your next one? So this is for my curly haired girls. Do not straighten your hair in the summer. Just don't do it. <laughs> don't get a silk press. Don't get a relaxer. The summer is for protective styles only because it just won't last, you guys. Like, you will get it done. And honestly, this happened to me as early as now because the weather has been so bad. (laughs) I've had friends that literally walked out of the salon and two hours later, because it either rained or it was so humid, their hair was already back to its original texture. So just don't 
don't do it. Do it during the winter time. Get your braids during the summer. Do your protective styles, but do not straighten your hair in the summer. It's not. It's just not going to last. It's not going to last. It's not going to last. There's no way. Yeah. All right. Carly, your next one. Always bring a jacket with you wherever you go. The weather is always going to change. That's mm. that's Houston. You never mm-hmm. know if it's going to be hot, cold, raining, like Dina said. So you always need a jacket, like literally. Because even mm-hmm. if it's hot outside, let's say you go to a restaurant. When you go inside the restaurant, it's going to be freezing because they're trying to combat the heat. So you need a jacket. It's mm-hmm. essential. I'm telling you. I like <laughs> That's a good one. So my next one is related to clothes as well. In the summer, please do not work out in cotton shirts. Okay. Mm. You're going out, (laughs) running Memorial Park. You're doing a class outside or inside. It is so hot in the city that if you wear a cotton shirt, you're just not going to, you're not going to like it. It's not going to be a good feeling. So please do not work out in cotton shirts. I see people running in cotton shirts. I'm like, what are you doing? You're carrying like five pounds of sweat right now. This isn't good for you. You're going to you're gonna start hurting here in a little bit. This is horrible. Please just get a dry fit shirt and you'll love it so much more. And like, I love working out in the summer outside. I don't mind it. I like the heat. But if you wear a cotton shirt, you're going to hate it. Yeah. And can I add to that, Raheel? I just want to say that don't wear dark colored clothing. I know that sounds kind of obvious during the summer, but Mm. I've done that before. I've worn like a black shirt when I was out reporting and I almost really had legit heat stroke because it like you will get much hotter if you're wearing darker colored clothes during the summer. And it gets really hot in Houston really really fast and you don't even realize that you may be dehydrated Mm -hmm. so it's just better to be on the safe side wear loose fitted light colored clothing and i want to add to what brooke just said too about the dark clothing don't wear dark clothing at night if you're going to be walking around the city we cannot see you i can't see normally okay (laughs) so if i'm driving you have dark clothes on no you don't like your life you don't (laughs) damn okay I can't I like see okay. shots fired. <laughs> Dina, what's your next one? Okay, I'm trying to remember what they're called, but you know the the like the the foil looking things that repel the sunlight on your car, so that when you yeah the, the like a sun, sun shade, yes a sun, yeah that you ha- it's a two party you have to yeah. pack that and I recommend a battery powered portable fan because right when you get into your car it is way too hot for you to blast the AC it's gonna take a few it's gonna take like maybe ten minutes at least if oh, you're yeah. in my car to get the cool air going. And you don't want to, like, suffocate in your car. Yes, open the windows, but it's so extremely hot. I recommend having a portable fan and then always, always put those things that repel the sunlight on your car, even if it's, like, at nighttime and you're going to sleep and you'll wake up, trust me, without your leather seats burning your booty. Because I've had experience (laughs) where I would forget and I'd be leaving in the middle of the afternoon, like at 2 o'clock when the sun has just been hitting down on my car seats. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. Ooh. It's I not can fun. feel it. I can feel that leather burn <laughs> right now. Dad. That's a good. That's a really good essential uh, rule right there. Brooke, how about you? What's your next one? Yeah. So we talked a lot about weather, and my rule is that the weather is going to annoy you, but it'll change, and it'll probably change honestly in the same day. So if you're annoyed <laughs> by one season, we get sometimes four seasons in a week. Sometimes we get four seasons in one day. Mm-hmm. Houston to me has four seasons, which is hot super hot, humid, and then randomly cold. And so I feel like in the last week, we've experienced all of that. And even just going to the rodeo one day, I feel like it was cold when I got there. It was hot by the time I left. And then it was cold again. So if you're annoyed, (laughs) the weather will change and it'll be okay. Mm -hmm. We literally have weather for everybody here. Okay. Yeah. If you like it, you're going to experience it in one day. So yeah. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Carly, your next one. Have a kit in the back of your trunk. Like Dina said, she said the first aid kit, but mine is for fixing your car. So like something to fix your tire. You'll need like a little air pump. I have an air pump in the back of my car to like, you know, air up my tires. Something to start your car if it just decides, the battery just decides to die. That's important because yeah. you can get stuck a nice jumper, places. Jumper cables. Yes, exactly. Jumper yeah. cables, exactly. Jumper cables, because it's just, it's so important. I'm telling you, this yeah. city is too far spread out that if you get lost somewhere, your friends can't get to you quick, you'll just be stuck on the side of the road looking crazy, unless you have AAA. AAA is really good too. That's a survival kit. <laughs> 
I highly recommend getting a portable air compressor. Mm -hmm. You can get them on Amazon for like 20, 30 bucks, mm -hmm. but they're great. Like you just plug it into your, your car light and boom, you can pump up the air in your tires if you need to. Mm -hmm. um, but since you brought that up, I'm going to give you my next one and that's get uh, insurance slash warranty on your tires because mm. our city is awesome. We're, we're like, there's so much to do. It's so great. But our city really sucks when it comes to potholes, okay? Oh Especially yeah. on Westheimer, Richmond, yep. uh, Kirby, Shepherd, all the big um, artery streets, basically. The potholes suck. So get some kind of warranty on your tires. You can go to any of the big uh, tire stores and you don't even have to buy the tires from them. You can just go get a warranty on them. So if your tire, you hit a pole, uh, you you hit a pothole and your tire gets a um, uh, some kind of tear in it, they'll fix it for free. Oh. Okay, get a warranty, please. Uh, especially because tires are expensive now, mm -hmm. really expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's my next one. All right, we're gonna do a fun one. All right, last one for everyone. Brooke, do you have a fun one? So mine is, I guess, more sentimental than fun, but you could make it fun depending on how you go about this, but. I think with Houston, there's a true volunteer spirit. And so I would say that if you're looking for something to do, if you're looking for a way to meet people, then be kind and help your neighbor. And I think that comes out a lot during tragedy. Um, we talked a lot about how the weather can be crazy. So yes, there are hurricanes that happen here. There are floods, there are freezes even that happen, but I see the best of Houston, honestly, during tragedy. And so getting involved with one of those organizations um, before something like that happens and already volunteering in the community, it's just a really good way to meet people. And also, honestly, it help, makes you feel better yourself. So that's, I guess, my fun slash sentimental rule of Houston. It's a good one. Carly, how about you? Do you have one? Yeah, mine is not completely fun. I could be fun if you like to get dressed up, but that's a de definite key to Houston. Dress up everywhere you go. So the oh. thing is that I used to live in a country town, which like you can roll out of the bed, go to the store and it's fine. But in Houston, if I go to HEB, I'll still do sweatpants and stuff like that sometimes just if I just don't have it in me. But people think it's a fashion show everywhere they go in the city. So yeah, I, it's just, I feel like that's a key just to know that look presentable. I'll say presentable. You don't have to be America's next top model, but you never know your, who you're going to see. So the Target in the Galleria area, um, <laughs> yes. we used to call it hot. We used to call it hot Target because <laughs> it was literally everyone dressing up to go to Target. And it's so funny you mentioned that tip um, because that is true. Like people dress up even to go to Target. <laughs> and that's why it's like the place to be seen uh, over there in the Galleria area. So I like that mm -hmm. one. I'm going to give a sports one. Okay. So my okay. background uh, you know, I worked in sports for a long time, but here's an essential rule if you live in the city of Houston. Don't ever say that the Houston Rockets would not have won their two titles if Michael Jordan didn't retire. Okay. Oh. Oh. This is one of the biggest rules I can give to anybody that uh, lives here or moves here or is going to be here. Please don't say that. Okay. Because Michael Jordan did play part of the season and was in the playoffs that second title run they just couldn't beat the magic and that's not our fault we swept the magic here in the city of houston as a rockets fan so don't ever say oh you guys only won titles because michael jordan didn't play that is my <laughs> final essential rule all right just had to throw that one in there please don't say it <laughs> dina what's your fun one for the city of houston an essential rule my one fun thing is to explore the suburbs more. People are really focused on like mm. the Rice Village, the Montrose, mm. all the like downtown. But I would say explore the suburbs because they truly have some amazing gems, like awesome spots to hang out in. And then it's you kind of avoid the crazy traffic of trying to get to like the Montrose, the Heights, all those areas. Mm -hmm. So that's my tip. Yeah. There's tons there of go. great restaurants out there and things to do. Um, and I kind of get used to be like, the suburbs are dead, but really yeah. they have a lot of the same things that Houston has. So yeah, I also agree with Dina. I like it, Dina. You and I are the suburb coalition yes. of this podcast. Okay? <laughs> suburbs stand up. We are part of Houston too. Okay. Yeah. It's a sprawling city. All right. We, we are part of Houston as well, even though we live like 40 minutes away. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> <part of> it. <laughs> 
Well, I love this. This was really awesome. Good essential rules and tips to survive the city of Houston. We have gotten everyone prepared now, all right? So you cannot complain about the city of Houston after you listen to this. Uh, ladies, thank you so much for doling out this advice to our listeners. Yeah, this was fun. Thank you. It was so much fun. Thanks. That was lead producer Dina Kespa, producer Carleon Jones, and Brooke Lewis, the writer of our awesome daily newsletter, Hey Houston. Be sure to subscribe to the newsletter at houston.citycast.fm or click on the link in our show notes. That will do it for today. Thank you for listening, and I hope you learned something new. Y'all, I'm not even joking. Those parents who cut, I get so pissed, okay? And I usually don't get mad at anything.